Hey everybody, Wimpy here. In this video, we're going over everything about rooms, what they do, how to build them, and great layouts to maximize your staff and students' time in Mind Over Magic. There's a lot of details to go over, so let's get started. All you need to make a room is some floor, two walls, and a roof. The floor can be foundation, which is at the ground level, or floor, which is from the building tab. The roof can be an actual roof from the building tab or f more floor. To enter the room, you need to add either a hallway or a door. Hallways are free and allow anyone or anything to pass through. Doors cost some wood and only allow staff, students, ghosts, and any spectral enemies through. When you create a game, there's a customization option called randomized room keywords. This option is checked by default on Relentless, but it's not checked by default on Relaxed. This makes the game a bit more challenging by randomizing the keyword requirements to build certain rooms. In this video, I'm going to use unrandomized room keywords as examples. Is unrandomized even a word? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, what are keywords? I'm glad you asked. Keywords are essentially special requirements that need to be met for room bonuses to function. Here's a quick breakdown of the keywords used in creating special rooms. First, we have elevated. And for a room to be considered elevated, it can have no adjacent rooms or foundations below it. Next, we have grounded. And for a room to be considered grounded, it needs to be on foundation. At the start of the game, the only foundation available is at the ground level just above the mana font. After that, you'll have to research to build more foundation. Next up, we have Towered, and for a room to be considered Towered, no adjacent rooms can be to the left, to the right, or above. You'll need to use stairs or ladders to get into this type of room. The next room type we have is Skewed which means one outer wall needs to be at least three blocks taller than the other. There are ways to cheese this by adding like a little cutout basically, um, so that one side is just like one or two tiles uh, tall. And we'll get into that a little bit later in this video. Next up we have lofted, and for a room to be considered lofted, it needs to be taller than it is wide. For a room to be considered private, it can only have one point of entry. This could be a door or hallway, or stairs, or potentially even a ladder. But you can't combine both a ladder and a door. The last room type is isolated, and for a room to be isolated, it can't have a path to any other room. Now, that means that the person that is in the isolated room is basically stuck there. Let's see how keywords work in practice. The first room I like to build is the austere bedroom, which gives 2.5 conviction to sleepers. The default keyword for this room is private, meaning you can only have one point of entry. That point of entry can be a door, a hallway, stairs, or a ladder, but it can only have one of them. To make this room early on, don't put the room on the ground floor or your staff and students will only be able to go to one side of the map. We're building a mage tower, so let's start building up. Add a second floor with some stairs or a spiral staircase and some floors. Now you can build private rooms that don't cut off resources from half the map. The next room I like to build is the workshop. The default keyword for that is lofted, so we need a room that is taller than it is wide. This example is lofted, skewed, and private. Extra keywords are fine, they don't affect how a room functions. You just need to meet the bare minimum requirements of the room to get those bonuses. There are a lot of different rooms available in the workshop tab, and most of them are in-game rooms, so I'll briefly touch on them. The scullery is your first cooking room. The kitchen and fine kitchen are mid and late game cooking rooms. The atelier, am I saying that right? <laughs> is for late game quilting. The wood cuttery is a late game room for tree growing and wand crafting. For researching, I would suggest skipping the mage's study and instead just go ahead and make a mage's tower as soon as you're able to make the scrivener's desk. And note that to make the scrivener's desk, you will need rune wood and ash parchment to create it. Painting and sculpting are just ways to get more luxury and I don't think they're really necessary. Now that we have our workshop, I researched rustic dining to get us the dining table so that we can make a mess hall and dining room. 
this is the first time that we encounter rooms for specific team members. So students get a plus five conviction bonus when they eat from a mess hall, and staff get a plus five conviction bonus when they eat in a dining room. Looking at the keyword requirements, both rooms require lofted by default, meaning that the room must be taller than it is wide. Let's do some building adjustments so that we can get these rooms squeezed into our second floor. There we go. I shifted the austere bedroom off the edge to make room for the mess hall and the dining room. I also shifted the floor up by one tile, so now the dining areas are four wide and five tall. I added both floor and roof, which is unnecessary, and I just use it to show that you can build these rooms so that they work as normal interior rooms and don't need roofs to function. These rooms each have some additional building requirements we need to meet for them to work. The mess hall requires at least two dining tables, and the dining room requires just one dining table and 10 or more luxury. So to meet this requirement, I researched ritual accessories and built the solemn pedestal, which is a furniture item that adds some luxury. One suggestion I have when building the dining areas is to add a chest with a priority of five that includes the meals that you want your folks to eat. This is gonna cut down on travel time and speaking of cutting down on travel time, I would also suggest putting the dining area, the sleeping area, and the recreation area together. Let's look at the first recreation room in the conservatory. The conservatory has two keywords. By default, those are skewed and private. The workshop we made before actually has both those keywords, so let's repurpose that room as the conservatory and move our workshop buildings to a new lofted room. There we go. The workshop is a bit cramped, but your staff doesn't care. <laughs> now let's start building the conservatory in the skewed and private room. I placed two enchantophones and buildings worth 25 luxury into the room, and now we have a conservatory. By default, your units do not have any recreation time scheduled in, so be sure to adjust their schedules to accommodate um, and allow them to recreate. I like to add at least three blocks throughout the day, but there's times when I have four or five blocks. Just depends on how far out your staff is going. Our base is looking great so far. We have a sleeping area that gives 2.5 conviction, dining areas for students and staff that each give five conviction, and a recreation area which gives five conviction. So our team has a combined plus 12.5 conviction just from rooms. We're also crafting and researching 25% faster in our workshop. We're still missing some important rooms, like classrooms and a ritual room. With the exception of element-specific classrooms, all the other classrooms don't have any keyword requirements, meaning you can squeeze them in just about anywhere. I would suggest putting it where your students and your staff won't have to travel too far to eat and recreate. For ritual rooms, the assembly hall doesn't have a keyword requirement, but the more advanced auditorium requires grounded, which just means that the room needs to be on the ground level. More advanced ritual rooms are required to hire staff after a certain point, so I wouldn't really rush getting a good ritual room until you actually need it. The last room type to talk about are medical rooms. These are not required, but help your units heal faster. These are mid-game rooms, since they require a decent amount of research to unlock. Don't worry about making a medical room too quickly, just throw some medical beds down somewhere so that your units can heal. It doesn't really matter where. We've gone over the basics now, but what about late game rooms that require a lot of keywords? Thankfully, there's a pretty simple answer to that. You can easily make rooms elevated, lofted, private, and towered by following these steps. I've also got a method to make them skewed as well. You're just gonna have to slightly alter the steps that we're taking, and I'll go over that in detail in just a moment. To start, You'll have to have researched support columns and ladders, which are about halfway down the yellow research tree. The basic premise here is that you'll use support columns as a buffer between rooms and floors, and the ladder area between rooms is not enclosed so that it doesn't count as a room. To start, build a wall that is five tiles high, and then build another wall seven tiles away so that the room is six tiles wide. Add hallways or doors to these walls, it doesn't matter which. Outside the wall, build a ladder up. On the other side of the ladder, make the exact same room layout you just made, two five tile high walls with the six tiles in between. Add floor to create roofs on the fifth tile high for each of these rooms. 
Next, add a single support column above each of the four walls. When the supports are complete, add floor across the top of the support columns, the entire width of both rooms. Add walls that are eight tiles high on top of each of the support columns and floors on top of those. The inside of the room should be six tiles wide and seven tiles tall. If you need these rooms to be skewed, they will need to be seven tiles wide and eight tiles tall with a cutout on the side. I'll put a graphic on the screen for how you can make skewed work with this setup. These rooms are done. Now let's add another support column above each wall and then again add floor above the support columns spanning the entire width of the build. Repeat the design of the rooms and make sure the inside is six tiles wide and seven tiles high. Unless you're doing skewed, in which case it needs to be seven wide and eight tall. You can continue going up with this design as many times as you like. I use these rooms as bed chambers, which gives staff 25 conviction when they sleep. If you want to add a section for units to path through, make sure it's at least three tiles high so that they can get through. I leave this space open so it's not considered a room. If you do close it off, it could mess up some keywords like towered. Those were my tips on room building in Mind Over Magic. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I have a lot of new content ideas for Mind Over Magic that I'm looking forward to sharing. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye!